Okay, so if you want to study physics, you need to know calculus. For self-studying calculus, I would recommend Calculus and Analytical Geometry by George Thomas and Ross Finney. I remember that I read that book a long time ago when I was in my undergrad and I thoroughly enjoyed that book. This book has an enormous number of exercises and you are not supposed to do all of them. However, I would recommend doing at least some exercises from each set. There is another popular book for calculus by Anton Bivinson Davis. You can try this book as well to see if you resonate with this book better than Thomas and Finney, but I'm pretty sure that you will like Thomas and Finney's book. See the description of all the books and all the resources that I will mention in this video in the description of this video. Now you need to learn some introductory physics including mechanics, waves and electromagnetism. I would definitely recommend University Physics by Hugh Young and Roger Friedman. And before someone says Heredo Resnick and Crane's book is better than University Physics, I would say no, that is not the case. You can call it my bias, but I just love University Physics and I don't think Heredo Resnick and Crane's book is as good as University Physics. However, if you still want to check out Heredo Resnick and Crane's book, I would say go for it because you should read whatever resonates with you. Now you delve into the world of thermodynamics and here I cannot recommend enough the book by Daniel Schroeder named Thermal Physics. I have to say here that Daniel Schroeder is one of the clearest authors that I have come across and when I was reading this book by Daniel Schroeder in my undergrad, I was in paradise. To read about thermodynamics, you need to read the first five chapters of this book. The later chapters are about another topic that we will talk about later. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of electronics, but in some undergraduate physics programs, a course on electronics is a compulsory course. For example, when I was an undergrad, it was compulsory for us to take electronics courses. Now, we can divide electronics into two parts, which are analog electronics and digital electronics. For analog electronics, I would recommend two books. The first one is Electronic Devices and Circuits by Bolstead and National Sky. The second book is Electronic Devices by Thomas Floyd. I remember that when I was an undergrad, I read Floyd's book in completion and I can say that it is a good book but there are some theorems that it uses that you need to know before reading the book. These theorems are called Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem. These theorems are used to simplify the circuits. I discovered Boylstead and National Sky's book a bit later and I must say that I was missing out because I loved this book a lot and this book will be my first recommendation for analog electronics. However, for this book too, you need to know Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem. If we now come to digital electronics, I would definitely recommend Introduction to Digital Technology by Louis National Sky. I did read a significant part of this book in my undergrad and I can vouch for this book. This book is very well written. Now we are delving into the meat of theoretical physics. We start with Classical Mechanics. I would definitely recommend Classical Mechanics by Herbert Goldstein. This is the big book on Classical Mechanics, but some people find this book difficult to read as their first book on Classical Mechanics. If you find it difficult to read, I would recommend that you first read Classical Mechanics by Douglas Gregory. I read this book when I was in undergrad, and I can say that this book is written very well. There are a lot of books on Classical Mechanics, for example, Classical Mechanics by Taylor and Classical Mechanics by Cho, but I cannot talk a lot about them because I have not read these books in detail. However, if you want a less detailed introduction to classical mechanics, there is one resource that I can recommend and that is the set of lecture notes on classical mechanics by David Tong. There is one thing that I want to mention here. If you plan to study theoretical physics in the future, you should memorize David Tong's name because he has written excellent lecture notes on a wide variety of topics in theoretical physics. After learning the beautiful formalism of classical mechanics, you should go to quantum mechanics now and there are a lot of textbooks on quantum mechanics that I can recommend here. However, I would go for for two books here. The first one is Quantum Mechanics, Concepts and Applications by Noradeen Zetli. I like this book because of the number of examples that this book provides and it also has a lot of good exercises. You cannot learn quantum mechanics without doing a lot of exercises and therefore this book is a very good resource for you. The second book that I want to mention is Modern Quantum Mechanics by J.J. Sakurai. I love this book because how it develops the theory is so beautiful and satisfying. Moreover, it covers some very important topics in quantum mechanics but they are not found in textbooks of quantum mechanics very easily. Some of these topics are Bell's inequality and Barry's phase. There is another book that I can mention here and its name is Introduction to Quantum Mechanics by David Griffiths. It is a very popular book on quantum mechanics but this book won't be on my list of recommendations but since it is popular therefore I mentioned it so you can check it out. While you are studying quantum mechanics you will need to learn a lot of mathematical tools to study quantum mechanics and any good book on quantum mechanics will introduce those concepts to you. However, for theoretical physics in general you need to learn a lot of new mathematical methods and this is why there is a whole course on mathematical methods in undergraduate programs. I would recommend the one and only Mathematical Methods in Physics by Arfkin Weber 
Aaron Harris for this course. This is one of my most favorite books ever. However, there is a small thing that I want to mention here. One topic that you need to study for theoretical physics is complex analysis. Now, I would not recommend reading complex analysis from Arfkin, Weber and Harris as a first reading. I would recommend reading about complex analysis from Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Arvind Kreisig. After reading it from Kreisig, I will still recommend reading about complex analysis from Arfkin, Weber and Harris because they will teach you some special techniques in complex analysis that are relevant to physics problems. After tackling quantum mechanics, the world is open to you. Now you can read many other topics. One huge field that you can explore now is statistical physics. One of my earlier recommendations, which was thermal physics by Daniel Schroeder, does include the basics of statistical mechanics in chapter 6 and 7. However, if you want dedicated books on statistical physics, I will recommend Concepts in Thermal Physics by Blundell and Blundell. Another book that I can recommend is Statistical Physics by Rajkumar Patria. Patria's book is a standard textbook for statistical physics in many universities. For a fast introduction, you can read David Tong's notes on statistical physics and I can also recommend this set of lectures by Professor Mehran Kardar. Mehran Kardar also has a set of books on statistical physics that you can check out but some of the topics in these books can be out of the scope of undergraduate level physics. Another huge field that you can explore now is solid state physics. Solid state physics uses quantum mechanics to predict the properties of different solids by studying their microscopic structure. I should mention that solid state physics is not my field of expertise but I have studied it in my undergrad and in my first masters so I would give one recommendation recommendation and this is none other than Solid State Physics by Charles Kittle. I found this book very clear in communication. Now let's come to the other huge pillar of 20th century physics which is relativity. There are a lot of books on relativity. Some of them are really good and some of them are not so good in my opinion. I will recommend two books here. One of them is a general relativity workbook by Thomas Moore. This book has dedicated boxes where it asks you to go through the steps of different derivations yourself. So I think that it provides you with a very good environment to learn special and general relativity. A second book that I would recommend is Space, Time and Geometry by Sean Carroll. This is a standard book for relativity in many institutions. Now there is a book which is called The Bible of Relativity. This book is called Gravitation by Misner, Thorne and Wheeler and it is commonly referred to as MTW. Now I would not recommend going through this book from cover to cover but at least you should know about this book. There is another book that I want you to know about but I would not recommend this book as your first introduction to relativity. This book is named Gravitation and Cosmology by Steven Weinberg. I would recommend that you read this book in a bit later part of your career, maybe when you are a grad student. And I promise that you will learn a lot of new things from this book. Most undergraduate physics programs also have a course on nuclear physics. I have gone through many textbooks on nuclear physics to find the book that actually resonates with me. For example, I started to read Nuclei and Particles by the Nobel laureate Emilio Segre. I would say that this book is really good and I still want to save some time to go back and read this book in detail. I would say that you should check out this book to see if you actually resonate with this book or not. However, the book on nuclear physics that I liked the most is Introductory Nuclear Physics by Kenneth S. Crane and this is my recommendation for studying nuclear physics. As a first introduction to nuclear physics, you don't need to read it from cover to cover. I would recommend that in your first reading, you should read it until the chapter on nuclear fusion. Now let's come to one of the most important courses in undergraduate physics and that course is on classical electrodynamics. There are two well-known books on this subject which are Classical Electrodynamics by J.D. Jackson and Introduction to Electrodynamics by David Griffiths. Jackson's book is not very popular with physics students as it has this perception that it is a very hard book to read. This is why you will see a lot of Jackson memes in physics community. I don't agree with this perception but I do agree with the statement that some of its exercises are really hard to solve. This is the reason why physics students consider Griffith's book as a savior because it saves them from reading Jackson. Now I would say that Griffith's book is a masterpiece. I have read this book from cover to cover and I would definitely recommend this book. However, Griffith's book is not a substitute for Jackson's book because Jackson's book contains a lot of advanced topics that Griffith's book does not address. However, there is a newer book that does match the level of Jackson's book and I think it is much easier to read. This book is Modern Electrodynamics by Zangwill and this book is my recommendation for some advanced topics. However, I would say that you should at least check out Jackson to see if it resonates with you. A course that in my opinion should be ubiquitous in undergrad physics programs but isn't is fluid mechanics. If you want to study 
body fluid mechanics i will recommend two books and these books are quite old one of them is an introduction to fluid mechanics by jk bachelor and the other one is fluid mechanics by landau and lifshitz the book by landau and lifshitz is part of a 10 book series on theoretical physics called course on theoretical physics and it is one of the most well known books on fluid mechanics but if you want my recommendation for learning fluid mechanics at a rapid pace i would recommend brilliant set of lecture notes on fluid mechanics by david tong you will learn almost all the basics of fluid mechanics by reading these notes by david tong so these were my recommendations for books and resources to study undergraduate level physics if you found this video useful then please consider subscribing i wish you very best for your studies and i will see you in the next video